Welcome to TV20 News, I'm Dan Monroe. Coming up on today's news, the City of Cleveland has officially kicked off Lead Poisoning Prevention Week, and a group of students at Marion Seltzer School took a pledge against gun violence. But first, it's Lead Poisoning Prevention Week in the City of Cleveland, and TV20 will be taking a closer look at how the city is educating the residents about lead poisoning in your home and what you should do. But first, TV20 Health Correspondent Richard Stewart has a story on what you can do to keep your family lead safe. National Lead Poisoning Prevention Week is a nationwide effort to raise awareness about the dangers of lead exposure, particularly in children. Experts warn that even minimal exposure to lead can cause serious health problems. This annual campaign brings together government agencies, healthcare providers, and communities to spread awareness and promote prevention strategies. We've made a lot of progress over the last 20 years, but unfortunately in our department, we're still caring for almost 1,500 children who are testing positive for lead poisoning from Cleveland. So lead poisoning, if there's any lead in, in your blood as a child, it causes brain damage and can cause learning disabilities, um, trouble in school, behavior problems, um, lower IQ. And so it's, it's troublesome and it's, it's something that is preventive if we uh, put the right investment into homes so that paint isn't peeling. This year's theme, Bright Futures Begin Lead Free, reminds us that every child deserves a safe environment. Lead-based paint, common in homes built before 1978, is still a major source of exposure to lead. In October, also Children's Health Month, local health officials are urging families to take action. It's a huge problem in Cleveland, and in Cleveland, it's, it's from the lead-based paint. It's from those old porches, from those old windows, from those old doors, all built before 1978, when it became illegal to put lead in paint. For families who live in homes with peeling paint, you know, please use the resources uh, that, that we have here in the city of Cleveland to help improve the situation so that uh, children can be you know, living in a lead-free environment. They can call us at, at 311 and we can direct them to, to resources. Uh, there's also the Lead Safe Cleveland Coalition that is uh, a, a great resource for folks looking for help and it's a good front door to all the different programs that are available. Federal agencies including the EPA, CDC and HUD have released key materials to guide families and caregivers. They emphasize three critical steps to reduce lead exposure. Get the facts. Learn about how lead exposure happens and what risks it poses. Many homes, schools, and childcare facilities built before 1978 may still contain lead hazards. Get your child tested. A simple blood test is the best way to know if a child has been exposed. Health officials urge parents to discuss testing with their child's healthcare provider if they live in or regularly visit older homes. Get your home tested. Hire a certified professional to inspect your home for lead hazards. If your home was built before 1978, testing is crucial to ensure your family's safety. Getting someone to come in and do an assessment as well as taking their children to go get tested. I mean, those would be the two most important things that would help with even finding out if there is a source in the home or if their child is safe. Folks at the Cleveland Department of Public Health are working hard to inform families about lead safety. Teams are actively connecting with families, sharing cleaning tips, healthy eating strategies, and practical ways to make homes safer while awaiting assessments. Quite a bit, you know, of housing stock in the city of Cleveland that was built before 1978. So what we do is normally go through the series of questions in regards to when was the house built, seeing if there are certain things that um, we look for when we come into the home. And we talk to them about different ways to make the home safe in the meantime. The goal of this week is not only to raise awareness, but also to connect families with support services to reduce the risks of lead exposure. Experts emphasize that community involvement and regular outreach are critical in keeping children safe. That's why we're out in the community a lot more in order to speak with the families, to let them know um, why we do the work that we do and why we need them to stay in contact with us when we're looking to try to make sure the children are safe in the home. To learn more about lead poisoning prevention, visit the EPA or CDC's websites. Now, if you live in an older home or have concerns, don't wait to reach out for testing and assistance. Remember, 
Bright futures begin lead-free, and every child deserves the best start in life. Thanks, Richard. I sat down with Cleveland's Building and Housing Director, Sally Martin O'Toole, to discuss a letter that went out to Cleveland landlords about a new process needed to certify their rental units as being lead safe. Okay, joining me right now is Sally Martin O'Toole, Cleveland's Director of Building and Housing. And today we're talking about a new letter that went out to landlords about the lead safe program. Director, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's so great to be here. So, Let's talk about this letter for the Lead Safe Certificate Program. Um, tell me about the program first, and then we'll go into what's changing. Sure. So the Lead Safe Certificate Program uh, started in 2019, and this is a result of the vast amount of lead poisoning that we have in Cleveland. So we're more than double the lead poisoning rates of peer cities. It's completely unacceptable. And so the city wanted to take a very aggressive stance to address lead poisoning. So the lead, the lead safe ordinance was passed in 2019. So of course, COVID came into the mix. And so essentially lead safe started being actively enforced in 2021. And there are two ways the ordinance allows it to be enforced. Um, and it puts the onus on the landlord to provide data about the lead safety of their unit. So typically they will use a private lead contractor, a lead worker, either a clearance technician or someone who does risk, risk assessments to come to the unit um, and evaluate that unit for lead risk. That report is submitted to the city and if all the indicators are passing, they would receive a lead safe certificate. So with the passage of Residence First last year, uh, lead safe certificate is one of the factors that a landlord must have to rent in good standing. And what we have found through research is that when landlords are using um, a lead clearance exam as opposed to a risk assessment, uh, there may be some unintended consequences. And so 11 children were found poisoned in homes that have a lead safe certificate. And that was very alarming to all of us and especially to Mayor Bibb. Yeah, I can understand. Yes, absolutely. Well, the letter I should say went out to landlords and say we're switching to risk assessment. What do they need to know from reading this letter? Well, the ordinance allows for two ways to be lead, lead safe certified. So it says it can be a risk assessment or it can be a clearance exam. Many people have been opting for a clearance exam. So administratively, we're making a pivot to that. And now we are saying that all landlords need to get a risk assessment of their unit, which is a much more comprehensive inspection process. It leads to a remediation plan and we will hold them accountable to that remediation plan. The good news is there are a lot of resources out there for landlords to help them fix their units. There's grant programs at the city and with the Lead Safe Cleveland Coalition. So there's many, many ways that we're going to help them bring their units into lead safety. But we believe after analyzing the ordinance and analyzing the results and seeing the poison children, that going into a risk assessment model is gonna be a way more effective way to guarantee lead safety going forward. And Cleveland will help them get into that right zone, that right model then, right? Yes, and in fact, the Department of Building and Housing has created a one to three family uh, lead compliance unit that's going to help smaller landlords who typically have not complied with the Lead Safe Cleveland Ordinance. We've had 33,000 units certified as lead safe since we have begun enforcement in 2021. Uh, but very, very few of the one to three family units have complied. We're seeing compliance with apartment buildings more often than we do with the smaller units. This is likely because many of these landlords are smaller mom and pop landlords. The homes have not been invested in for a long time and they have a long way to go to get to lead safety. So we intend to help them along the way. As long as they're making strides to bring their unit into compliance, we will keep working with them. If residents want more information about Cleveland's lead safe program, and if landlords want more information on how they can do more, where can they go? Um, they can go to the city's website and that's probably the best place to go for information. Or if you need to call someone and speak to somebody personally, you can call our lab team at 216-664-4370. 
And finally, Director, is there anything we miss about what people should know about going into the risk assessment? Yes, I think what is very important to note here is that we are making a change to our policy, how we're administering the Lead Safe program, and that is effective October 18th. So for those who are already involved in a clearance process with their unit and they've already submitted paperwork, we're gonna honor that. And if you have a lead safe certificate now, we're gonna honor that until it expires. So there are plenty of people with a two year lead safe certificate. We're absolutely honoring that. We're not asking you to do anything else, uh, but we do want you to know that going forward, we are going to need a risk assessment on your unit. All right, Sally Martin O'Toole, Director of Building and Housing. Thank you so much for this great information. Thank you so much. Next, the City of Cleveland kicked off Lead Poison Prevention Week in a very big way. National Lead Poisoning Prevention Week kicked off in the rotunda of Cleveland City Hall. A giant banner marking the event was hung over the second floor railing and representatives from the Cleveland Department of Health and the Department of Building and Housing were on hand with tables full of resources and information about the effects of lead poisoning. Cleveland Mayor Justin Bibb issued a proclamation officially designating October 21st to the 26th as Lead Poisoning Prevention Week in the City of Cleveland. For more information on Cleveland's Lead Poisoning Prevention Initiative, visit the Cleveland Department of Public Health's website at clevelandhealth.org. Coming up after the break, I spoke with Sonia Pryor-Jones, the city's chief of youth and family success, about Cleveland's upcoming youth summit, and later, we'll take you to the Tower Press apartment and the launch of their new art exhibit. Stay tuned. Today's vote, um, in my eyes, is not a very difficult one. Hi, I'm Melanie Townsend with Cleveland Public Library. Did you know that Cleveland Public Library is your CLE voter hub? We're here to keep you informed about the upcoming election. The CLE voter hub is your go-to place to research, to learn, and it's all about promoting democracy and ensuring that your voice is heard. You can find the CLE voter hub at every Cleveland Public Library branch where our staff is ready to assist with printed resources, answering questions, plus our online hub offers bilingual materials, frequently asked questions, and links to check voter status, polling locations, request absentee ballots, and more. As a nonpartisan resource, the library's goal is to empower you with the tools to make informed decisions this election season. Visit cpl.org slash vote for everything you need and make sure your voice counts. Welcome back to TV20 News, I'm Dan Monroe. The 2024 Youth Summit will be held at the Cleveland Browns Stadium on Tuesday, October 29th. And I spoke to Youth and Family Success Chief Sonia Pryor-Jones all about what promises to be a very informative and fun day. I am pleased to be joined right now by Chief Sonia Pryor-Jones. Tell me about your office and what they do. Sure. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Dan. Uh, the office, the Mayor's Office of Prevention, Intervention, and Opportunity, that's what I call it for short. We really do focus in on youth and young adults um, and all of the preventative factors that we can put in place to reduce and end violence in our community. Um, that includes everything from coordinating with partners on big initiatives and working um, in systems level work, all the way down to our violence prevention initiative called Cleveland Thrive, as well as partnering with our uh, folks here in recreation around expanding the opportunities for young people in recreation centers and making those centers more trauma informed. We also make sure that young people have employment opportunities mm -hmm. over the summer. So it's a full gamut of opportunities Michael, for youth and, and young adults. Opportunity is key because there's a big opportunity coming up for our high school students October 29th. Talk about that opportunity. Sure. On October 
October 29th, we'll be partnering again with the Cleveland Browns to offer a Youth Leadership Summit. Um, this is our second year that we've offered this summit, and this year we're really focused on youth voice. We have so many things happening in our community, so many things that our young people are involved in, and we really want to partner with young people, elevate their voice, and also teach them some new uh, tools and techniques that they can use to make sure that their voices are heard. Well, how important is it to make sure our youth do know that they have a seat at this table and what they have to say does really matter? Well, I think it's critical, you know, it's that old adage, our youth are the future and also the future is now. And so how do we ensure that young people know how decisions are being made as it relates to policies and things that they experience in their school day or outside of school? And how do we make sure that we hear from them and we get their input so we're designing and creating opportunities for them that they'll value? And the teens that come to the summit, what can they expect to see or get out of it? Oh, well, when they come to the summit this year, they'll have an opportunity to engage with a group of facilitators. They have multiple tracks for this year's summit. Um, youth Voice doesn't have to just show up from a formal presentation, right? But Youth Voice also shows up in the arts mm -hmm. and self-expression. And so young people will have an opportunity to self-select um, one of the tracks where they'll uh, spend uh, the afternoon with the facilitator around a topic and then they will build out a presentation that shares what they want us to understand and know so their voices are heard and have an opportunity to present that and share that uh, with our very own mayor, Mayor Justin Bibb. That's good to know too and I can't think of a better way for, for the teens to get their voice heard than through poetry music, uh, even like art, sculpture, paintings, anything like that. There's different ways to get that voice out, that message through. Absolutely, and we want to encourage that. We want to cultivate that. And we also want to, with our facilitators that will be working with us that day, give them an opportunity to learn new ways to utilize their voice. Is registration still open and how can people register? And so registration is still <clears throat> open and people could call our program manager who is leading this event, Ms. Samantha Holmes. Um, Samantha, her number here at City Hall is 664-2739. Um, and so they can give Samantha a call and get registered that way. This is all part of a bigger, a bigger series called the Thriving Youth Series. Tell me about that. Yes, and so our Thriving Youth Series is something that we started uh, in this administration as well. It's every October, and it's a way for not just the city of Cleveland, but the city along with great partners um, like Starting Point, MyCom, the Browns, of course, and a host of other partners to elevate the importance of out-of-school time. Um, so often people think about learning for young people is just happening in the school day, but what we also know is that 80% of a young person's time is spent outside of school. And they're also learning and developing. They're doing that in rec centers and after school programs and job um, opportunities, sometimes their first job. And so October is the month that we celebrate young people, the professionals that support them. So for example, Starting Point is hosting this year right over at Huntington uh, Center their annual OST symposium. And so this symposium is all about celebrating out of school time educators and all the great work that they do. We also have our friends at Open Door Academy um, and on National Lights on After School Day, they will actually host a conversation around policy. We know that there are important policy decisions being made at the local, federal, um, as well as state level on out of school time. So they, they'll be convening partners around that. Of course, there's the Youth Leadership Summit we're very excited about. And so these are ways for us in this month of October as we celebrate National Lights on After School for us to say young people are important, um, the way that we support our young people and the educators that educate them on a daily basis after the school bell rings are also important for us to highlight. All right, a lot going on, very good. Well, well, we're talking here about the Youth Summit 2024. That's Saturday, October 29th from 8.30 to 2 p.m. at that big venue on the lake, Huntington Field. You've probably seen it before. You can't miss it. It's really big. Uh, you can register now. You can call Chief. 
Thank you so much for joining me. A lot of great information. It's, it sounds like a fun event. Thank you so much for having us. And we w welcome people to come out. And if you can't make these events, keep in mind that we have fantastic opportunities available every day in our neighborhood resource and recreation centers. And our office and staff is available to support families for what they like to do after school. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Students from Marion Seltzer School took a pledge to create a better school free from gun violence. If you find a gun, you stay away from that gun. We do not play with guns. We do not use guns. And if you see one, you tell an adult immediately, okay? Gun safety was a message of the day at Marion Seltzer School. And assistant principal Tanika Lamb stressed to the young students the dangers of playing with guns. Today's program was centered around a day known as the National Day of Concern. The National Day of Concern is a national initiative that started in 1996. Over 10 million school children have actually taken the pledge against gun violence. Um, the, gun, the pledge does speak on not bringing a gun to school, not settling personal disputes with guns, using your personal influence with your friends and your peers to make sure that they aren't falling into gun violence habits. So it's just getting, spreading the word out there that kids should be finding different alternatives rather than picking up a gun and bringing it either to school or into another center where another um, setting where they shouldn't. As a part of the lesson on gun safety, each student took a pledge on what they should do when they come in contact with a gun. Today we are sponsoring and having our kids pledge for no guns, not using guns, not playing with guns. And so we're all taking a pledge today to say we will not bring guns to school, we will not play with guns, we will not touch with guns. Wow, such a valuable and potentially life-saving lesson those youngsters learned. Students didn't just pledge to stay away from guns at Marion Seltzer School alone, but students from all across the CMSD schools made the same pledge. With the presidential general election coming up on Tuesday, November 5th, it's important to be prepared with all of the voting details you need to know before the big day. Visit the Cuyahoga County Board of Elections website at boe.cuyahogacounty.gov to find your voting location, hours of operation, as well as take a look at a sample ballot and what candidates you will see on that ballot. The Board of Elections is your one-stop shop to prepare you for voting day on Tuesday, November 5th. TV20 has a great show spotlighting local entrepreneurs and small business owners and how they serve the residents of the city of Cleveland. It's called Make It in Cleveland and you can watch it here on TV20 or on our TV20 Cleveland YouTube page. We'll be back with more TV20 news right after these messages. Welcome back to TV20 News, I'm Dan Monroe. Cleveland's Tower Press Building, a hub for creativity, opened its doors for a unique annual event showcasing the works of its resident artists. From painters to photographers and sculptors, this exhibit offers an eclectic mix of artistic talent. TV20's Cornell Calhoun III takes us to the heart of this one-of-a-kind event. Thanks, Dan. At the Tower Press Development Building, 1900 Superior, downtown Cleveland, for the Tower Press Artists Art Exhibit. Inside the historic Tower Press Building, art is more than just a passion. It's a way of life. This live and work loft space has become a sanctuary for Cleveland's creative minds. Today we are having an artist open house. So the artists at Tower Press gather here in their very own Wooltex Gallery 
and they exhibit their works, showcase videos, uh, all the different types of mediums we have of artists living and working in the building. From the bold abstract paintings to the intricate sculptures, the open art exhibit highlights the diverse range of talent that thrives in the Tower Press. Each year, resident artists showcase their latest creations. So this is a, a work in process and oh, the work is not done until I know it's done in my heart and sometimes I have to put it aside for a while and I come back to it. But one of the things that I've learned over the years is to not be attached to the outcome while in the process. So when I move my ego and myself out of the way and I allow it to just be what it is, then I come up with something that I didn't even intend on it being. It just creates itself in a way. I'm just the conduit through which it's being expressed. Whether you're a seasoned art collector or someone who simply enjoys the beauty of expression, the Tower Press Open Art Exhibit offers something for everyone. It's a reminder that Cleveland's artistic community is thriving and full of life. I love taking the time to just open my mind up and create and just do what comes naturally and just pour out my expression, whether it's in painting or weaving, to just think about what I want to do and just do it and take chances and be, have fun and have a good time with it. A wonderful and exciting event. Tower Press Development, Downtown Cleveland. Cornell Hubert Callum III for TV20, We Are Cleveland. Thanks, Cal. Looks like an amazing opportunity to explore Cleveland's art scene. Hey, Halloween is coming up on Thursday, October 31st, and here's what you should know. Ward 16 Councilman Brian Casey is hosting his 10th annual Haunted Hollow Halloween event on Friday, October 25th from 5 to 9 p.m. at Jefferson Park on West 132nd Street and Lorraine Avenue. The event features a haunted maze, trick-or-treating, a pumpkin carving contest, and a family movie at dusk. This fun family event is free and open to the public. The City of Cleveland Recreation Centers will be hosting their annual Big City Boo event on Thursday, October 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. This event is free at all the City Recreation Centers. The Friendly Inn Settlement, located at 2386 Unwin Road, will be having their Harvest Fest on Thursday, October 31st from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. The event will have candy, games, and giveaways. Kids can wear a costume, but no mask, please. The Buckeye Woodland Hills Trunk or Treat event will take place on Thursday, October 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Buckeye Water Tower parking lot at Buckeye Avenue and Shaker Boulevard. This event will feature a DJ plus free treats. Steel Yard Commons, located at 3447 Steel Yard Drive, will be having their Trunk or Treat event on Saturday, October 26th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., featuring free treats at participating retailers along with face painting and glitter tattoos. Finally, Trick or Treat on Fleet will have games and free treats on Saturday, October 26th from noon until 3 p.m. all along Fleet Avenue in Slavic Village. TV20's coverage of fall sports championships are gearing up. We will once again be covering the Rec League football championships and all-star games taking place at Cleveland Central Catholic. Plus, the Rec League swimming championships and finally, the big cheer competition. Stay tuned to TV20 Cleveland for the best coverage of city sports. We are constantly uploading new content on our TV20 Cleveland YouTube page, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. You can also connect with TV20 Cleveland on your favorite social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and X. Thanks for watching TV20 News. I'm Dan Monroe. Be sure to stay tuned for more on TV20. We are Cleveland.